to call this uh, Community Redevelopment Agency meeting to order for April the 18th, 2024. With that, I do call the meeting to order. Could we all please stand together for the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. You may be seated. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Sheriff Blackwell. Here. Vice Sheriff Matini. Member Irvin. Here. Member Gilbert. Here. Member Fletcher. Member Wagner. Here. Member Loden. Here. Thank you. And I think Member Matini is going to be here, but she said she would be late. Those of you that hopefully have had time to look over our minutes from December the 7th, uh, 2023. Are there any additions or changes or corrections? If not, could I have a motion for approval? Motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And it carries. The first item on our agenda for new business is the 2023 financial statements and independent audit report presentation by Purvis and Gray, and I see you guys are here. Thank you, board, for this opportunity to present uh, the annual report and audit report for the CRA for the year ending September 30th, 2023. My name is Matthew Gnome, an audit director with Purvis Gray and Company on the engagement, joined today by Tim Westgate, audit partner with Purvis Gray. So we'll be doing a brief presentation of the audit reports uh, for the CRA for the fiscal year ending. As part of the audit engagement, we issue several reports. The first, the primary report that we issue is an independent auditor's report on the financial statements as they are presented. That can be found on page one of the bound financial statements or the PDF copy if you have a copy of that. Um, the first paragraph there discusses the opinion on the financial statements. It's our responsibility as auditors to issue an opinion on the financial statements. It's management's responsibility to prepare and fairly present those financial statements. Based on our audit procedures that we performed, we have issued a clean or an unmodified opinion on the financial statements, which is mentioned in that first section on the independent auditor's report. That's the highest level of assurance that we can provide as part of an audit engagement. So that's exactly what you want when you're getting a financial audit. <clears throat> um, also, we also issue a report in accordance with government auditing standards. Um, this pertains to the CRA's in internal controls over financial reporting and compliance. That report can be found on page 17 towards the back of the, of the binding, but to save your time to flip to that, I'll just let you know that there's no significant issues, no material weaknesses, or anything else that we needed to bring to your attention related to the CRA's internal controls. We also issued two reports related to compliance with Florida statutes. Those two Florida statutes, one of them being 218-415 related to government investment policies. Uh, the, other, the other compliance report that we also issue is uh, Florida Statute 163387, specifically related to compliance uh, with CRA expenditures and other items that are under that Florida Statutes. We performed our testing uh, in compliance with those and found no exceptions, and we issued a clean report related to those as well. Just a brief financial highlight. This shows the last three years just broken out by revenues, expenditures, and fund balance. You can see the revenues have steadily grown over the past several years, primarily related to increasing property values um, within the CRA's district. Expenditures actually were down slightly over the previous year, roughly $70,000. Um, most of that was related to government aid, uh, government aid to organizations in the previous year that did not occur again in 2023. Overall, the fund balance increased over the previous year, roughly $76,000, so added to your fund balance over the previous year. We also issue a separate um, letter that's specifically titled Communication of Those Charged with Governance. 
in this letter we would bring to your attention <clears throat> any issues or any matters of disagreements with management or anything we really needed needed to bring to your attention. Happy to say we didn't have anything that we specifically needed to bring to your attention. You will see in that letter and also on this slide there was one audit adjustment that was made during the current year um, to properly present the financial statement for the CRA. And the last thing I just want to discuss, last year we did have a written management letter comment that we presented to you all, and that was related to the compliance aspect for the CRA under the Florida statute, requiring the CRA to submit their budget within 10 days to the county of approval. Um, that was rectified in the current year, so we are not repeating that comment. That was addressed by management in this, pre in this past year, so that comment has been removed. And that's all I have for my presentation. I would like to just take an opportunity to thank uh, Jeff and his finance team, as well as the rest of the CRA and the staff that work with us and Kath to deal, put up with us as we ask all of our questions throughout the audit. They're very um, well responsive and help with a smooth audit process. So we really enjoy that. So I'd be happy to answer any questions if anybody has any questions. Would any of the members have a question you'd like to ask? Well, we certainly appreciate uh, your work and continue to work with our city. and. We certainly appreciate our financial department that uh, stays on top of all of our finances and keeps us out of trouble. So oh, yeah. Great the CRA funding is really important. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to skip down to item E. since we have one of our distinguished commissioners here in this meeting, and we certainly want to value his time and maybe win some favor with the county. We do appreciate the county's support of our city. <laughs> Good afternoon, Antoinette Forbes, Economic Development Director. Uh, so the item before you is the mural program funding agreement in conjunction with Osceola Arts. So the agreement is for a three-year period in the amount of $60,000 per year, totaling a total of $180,000, which is why it's brought before uh, the board today. Part of that agreement is that Osceola Arts um, will provide three to five murals per year. Um, and in that, they would also identify the artists, the type of design, as well as identify the business owners and buildings of where to put those designs. Uh, in conjunction, the CRA will help market and promote that program. We'll also commit to providing that funding on that annual basis for that three-year period and also assist them in identifying uh, properties for that, for the artwork. We will also help them in terms of identifying any code compliance issues or going through our permitting process. Uh, I also want to mention that this project is eligible under Florida Statute 163.3725 that we are carrying out plans for a program of voluntary or compulsory repair and rehabilitation of buildings or other improvements in accordance with our community development plan, which makes specific reference to public art. We also are um, in compliance with our master plan, which is section H1, that talks about establishing a grant program to assist the exterior facelifts, renovations, and restoration of structures that are consistent with the plan's design guidelines. So it's basically an extension of our commercial facade program. It also meets our strategic plan goals of economic development and staff recommends approval of this item. We do have guests here if you'd like to ask them any questions or myself. Any discussion? Mr. Aaron, would you like to speak to this item? Thank you, Mayor, board members. Just want to say thank you to your staff for working with us to get to this point. We've seen great um, return on the investment in the city of Kissimmee where we've been running this program for a number of years. If you've been in downtown Kissimmee, you've all the murals created there are, are through Osceola Arts. And so we're just excited to be here and to, to bring that opportunity to St. Cloud as well. I'm available for any questions. I also have Marilyn Cortez Lovato, who is our visual arts director. So if I can't answer it, she'll be glad to help you out and answer it as well. Do you have any, any questions? Mr. Wagner? So my, my question is on the, to the property owner that owns the building. If they were to sell it and say, oh, I want to paint the building, is there any protection to that mural? What we've done in the past for the city of Kissimmee, when we work with individual property owners, we ask that they keep it for at least a period of two years. And then after that, they're you're able to do whatever you'd like with it. And we also ask that as a, as a property owner, your wall, whatever it's going to be painted on, is prepped and ready for us to be able to do it so the mural will have a, a good longevity if so desired. Thank you. 
You're welcome. That, that was part of my question. Thank you. Uh, and the second one, as far as Miro itself, how do you decide is, is, is the Osceola Arts, do they, dis, do they decide? Are they the building owner? We how? work, Maryland works with our, the individual property owners and usually brings concepts forward and works with that building owner to, to land on a, a subject that, that works for the building owner and works for the community as well. Okay. So it's, it, we've, we've had, for instance, our hardest one to work with was the library in Osceola County, with Osceola County in downtown Kissimmee, landing on a concept that, that worked for the library. And also we, we don't use this as an advertisement means. Um, we've had folks who've run real estate agencies who want us to paint balloons and houses on the side of their building and we have to let them know this is original pieces of art that are being created and, and placed on your building as a, as a campus. Our city manager, your light is on, that's your light. Thank you, Mayor. Um, although Councilwoman Matheny is not here, I did um, want to appreciate the, that she helped start this concept with Commissioner Arrington. Um, she asked for the meeting for us to talk and, and to consider the opportunity of the programming expanding to St. Cloud. So I just wanted to share that. Good. Uh, you know, the arts add so much to a city. And I know when you go through downtown St. Cloud as well as downtown uh, Kissimmee, you see all of the artwork, the murals, I think, add to the character mm -hmm. as well as the decor. And here I know in St. Cloud our murals tell a story. And uh, so I look forward to uh, working with you, as, and I assume this item will be approved. Do you have any other thing else you'd like to add to us? Yep. Thank you all so much for the time, and look forward right. to putting some art in downtown St. Cloud. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. Can I have a motion for the approval of the mural program? Motion to approve. We have a motion. I'll and second. do I have a second? The mayor will second it. <laughs> we have a motion. Uh, from Mr. Urban and a second from the mayor. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And it so carries unanimously. Thank you. Now we'll go back to the presentation on the alleyway improvement study. We're getting there. You're quite adept at that. Awesome. There we go. Uh, so as part of our master plan, we also um, it mentioned about doing improvements to our alleyways. And so we reached out to um, first the first phase is to do a study to develop conceptual ideas of what the alleyway improvements would look like. Part of that conceptual um, design is data collection. So we worked with our consultant who will uh, give you more in depth about how we engage with our downtown businesses to get information. Also with city staff to figure out what's the best and highest use for our alleyways. And so with that, I will introduce uh, Benoit Panicker, if I say a last name correctly. <laughs> Thank you from Ayers, who'll give his presentation on the improvement study. All right. Good afternoon. Thank you, Antoinette. Good afternoon, Chair, Mayor, Board Member, City Manager. Thank you for the opportunity to present. My name is Benoit Panica. I'm with Ayers Associates. Uh, we're a planning, design, and engineering firm. Uh, so last fall, Antoinette um, asked us to look into the downtown alleys and the potential for improvement of those alleys, uh, consistent with all that's been happening in terms of business and, uh, and investments that's, ha that's been happening in downtown. So we um, came up with a scope to do a project for about four months in two phases. The first phase was an extensive study, uh, which included the actual uh, visitation of the site and assessments of the corridors themselves. Uh, we did have a workshop with all the department heads. Uh, we had a questionnaire out to the department heads in advance, so we made sure that we had all the information in terms of projects and what's happening in the city. Uh, we did have a survey to the business group in downtown and we had a one-on-one -on -one presentation slash feedback session with them as well. Uh, so the phase one was wrapped up in late last year, which was the assessment, the data, uh, city's plans and policies, the actual conditions of the site, and, and the, you know, the 12 city blocks. And in phase two, uh, we got into some initial ideas about the visioning and how uh, the, the alley improvements can happen over a period of time. We presented some high-level cost estimates as well, 
And uh, essentially, when we were asked to look at the, the alley improvements, it was about uh, activating downtown, economic development, and enhancing the overall experience of being in downtown. Uh, the, the whole block itself, the whole area of downtown, uh, as we defined it, uh, in all your studies as well, is about 12 blocks. And uh, there were 11 alleys. One is actually within, within the car dealership. So you, you're, you're left with 11 alleys, 10 and a half alleys. Uh, we, we did a site study. We looked at all of the conditions, uh, both in terms of infrastructure and the condition of the asphalt and, and everything else. Um, and uh, that's, that's the quick graphic of, of all of the existing and conditions assessment. Uh, in terms of acreage itself, we have uh, 33 acres over 12 city blocks. Mm. Uh, one of the benefits of uh, the existing structure of St. Cloud is your alleys are 20 feet wide, which gives you in immense potential to make improvements. Uh, as part of phase one, we looked at other alleys as well, in Mondora, in Tavares, uh, which my colleague Jay will explain in a bit. Uh, those alleys are kind of narrow, and they have had to work with m much more of a constrained space. So the framework for alley improvements is much more viable in downtown St. Cloud. Uh, so 20 feet consistent. Uh, we have some infrastructure going on in there, but it's all manageable within, within the alleys uh, that we have downtown. On average, the alleys are about 200 to 300 feet long, which is also beneficial in, in, in making improvements and having an impact on local businesses and the community. Uh, so with that, I'll, let me call my colleague here, Jay, who's going to explain uh, how we got about the process. It's a quick 10 slides. We'll go through it really quickly. Uh, yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for having us. My name is Jay Maluku. Okay. So as my colleague Benoit mentioned... Could you speak a little oh, louder? Oh, for I'm so sorry. I have yeah, such I'll a soft voice. Turn the volume up on the mic, please. Uh, I'm not sure how to do that. Is it through the remote? Or I need to turn my hearing aids up. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll just, I'll project. There you go. <laughs> my apologies. So we looked at about four case studies that share the same context as St. Cloud. We looked at Claremont, Deland, City of Tavares, as well as Mount Dora. Uh, some of the features from these alleys that they have activated in their downtowns, with the exception of the City of Tavares. Um, like St. Cloud, City of Tavares has a very rich history. Uh, what they did with their alley, um, situated in residential neighborhood, they utilized the alley as a way to pay homage to their history by naming it after prominent uh, people within their community. Um, a lot of the improvements in these alleys are surface levels, but what's really neat about them is that they are multifunctional and they could be used for art events, markets, flea markets. Um, I know you all have your downtown monthly market, so that's something to keep in mind that potentially that's a uh, an event that could be held in, in one of the activated alleys as well. Um, with these alleys, um, they were uh, implemented through community gatherings, stakeholders between city staff, um, as well as external stakeholders as well. Um, next slide. Oh, there we go. So as Bonoy mentioned, we did hold a business owner uh, workshop. This was actually in tandem with the survey that was sent out um, to the business owners group during the phase one process. Um, so the purpose of this workshop was to elicit feedback from the business owners um, and then as well as um, let them know about the enhancements to the alleys that will be happening downtown. Um, the feedback was uh, very great and the overall consensus was that they are loving the idea of enhancing the alleys. However, uh, some things to keep in mind is parking is a bit limited as of right now. Um, if any enhancement to the alleys are going to be done, they would prefer that they are multifunctional so that n not one particular alley is pigeonholed to one specific idea. Um, so as I mentioned with some of the other case studies, um, they could be used for pedestrian access, um, they could be used for emergency vehicles, uh, motorists, as well as citywide and community events also. Um, some of the uh, businesses in the downtown area are planning on expanding um, into the alley, whether that mean um, opening up a, a rear entrance as well as doing some sort of interior as well as exterior renovations as well. 
either way, they are excited about the idea um, and the whole idea of the uh, Activated Alley is to support the local businesses. So just a couple of things to keep in mind. So we've developed some vision and principles to help guide the process of the enhancements with the alleys, and I will show some illustrative examples uh, later on in the slides as well. Um, but the main thing to remember at the purpose of enhancing these alleys is to support the local businesses, enhance the downtown alleys, as well as you guys enhancing the downtown overall through your downtown initiative, and also making sure that the alleys are accessible, walkable, um, multimodal, and that they connect to the Florida Avenue bike trail as well. Some of the principles that we have um, come up with have helped inform the project further as well as security. The alleys as they stand now when we did our site visit um, are limited on lighting. And so we know that in order to draw foot traffic into the downtown area and especially these particular corridors, enhanced lighting will be needed, security, as well as particularly looking at improved paving. So we have categorized these alleys into different hierarchies and or themes. So on the far left hand side between Massachusetts Avenue and New York Avenue, we have the service alley, which we are designating as relax. Then in the middle, we have active alley, which we are designating as celebrate. And then on the far right, abutting Florida Avenue, we have the connect as the name suggests. It is connecting with the enhanced features that you already have in your downtown. Um, in terms of theming the downtown, uh, we are looking at third places. If anyone is familiar with that, your first place is your home, your second place is your work and or school, your third place is independent of the two. It is the place in which you go to relax, to get away from the stresses of life. As you know, as you all live here, downtown is riddled with different third places as some of the examples, you have the St. Cloud Twin, you have Centennial Park, Garage Bar, as well as the Blue Lotus Yoga and Wellness. These alleys act as community builders and in turn, can also be third places. So this is an, one of the illustrative examples of the service alley. So this is alley number one. This is abutting uh, City Hall as well as where the proposed parking structure will be. This is surface level uh, enhancements, so improved paving, security, lighting, uh, as well as mid-block crossings. Um, as well as native vegetation. Now please keep in mind that some of these key features that we do list are applicable to certain alleys as existing surrounding conditions will um, affect some of the key features that will be implemented. The service alley in particular is meant to be accessible multimodal uh, service corridor um, that provides opportunity for walkable and leisure activities as you can see in the example on the upper right hand corner. Then we have active alleys. So this is alley number two. This is the alley that is abutting Centennial Park. The, uh, this alley, as well as the one south of it, are predominantly meant to be where your play would be. So this is where majority of your community events would be. Um, Centennial Park can be used as an, ex uh, an expanded event space. One of the case studies for DeLand, they have this historic parking uh, structure that they do use as an expanded um, event space in the event that they reach capacity in their alleys. And it adds about an extra 10,000 square feet. So think of the possibilities with Centennial Park if you so choose to expand the park outward further. With this illustrative example, we're showing that this particular alley segment is pedestrian only, so that would mean blocking it off. Um, as well as having some sort of like shading structure, um, seating, possibly food trucks. Again, these are all surface level enhancements, but all of the alleys will have a certain characteristic that carries over. So again, mid-block crossings, enhanced lighting, security, native vegetation, again, where applicable, as well as consolidated waste where applicable. Then we have connector alleys. These are the alleys that are abutting Florida Avenue. They will connect to the multi-use trail as well as the bikeway trail. 
as I mentioned previously, they will have that same characteristic um, brought over. Uh, but this alley in particular is sort of meant to create a loop on the trail. So we know that it is running north to lakefront. Um, bringing foot traffic to the downtown quarter. You have pedestrians and cyclists on that trail, bringing them into the downtown quarter and doing a loop around these alleys. And this provides the opportunity for some of these pedestrians as well as cyclists to visit some of the local businesses downtown as well, not only bringing foot traffic, but again, supporting the local businesses in the downtown area. Okay, there we go. So, this is a preliminary operational schedule of what potentially um, operations in the downtown area could look like. Uh, we have some set times for deliveries, uh, packages, um, operational hours during the day for shopping, happy hour, and then evening um, operations as well. Um, as I mentioned, this is pre uh, preliminary and uh, this will need further um, this will need to be further tailored towards the businesses downtown to make sure that everyone um, is consistent with what's happening downtown, what's going to be open, how are the operational times are going to work, as well as how are we handling the capacity of all of the foot traffic in the downtown area. I am now going to turn this back over to my colleague to go over the cost. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. So this is the last slide. Um, so we we looked at each and every alley. I, I urge you to look into the report. Uh, it's fairly detailed. It's very high level still, uh, leaving you know further room to actually maneuver the design and make it applicable to what the the grants and the budget that we have in hand. So in terms of uh, the next steps, we proposed uh, we had some high level cost estimates. So these are um, by uh, we looked at DOT standards and uh, looked at what we were proposing on each one of these different types of alleys. So as Jay mentioned, there are three separate kind of treatments. So the one in the middle the, uh, is got the highest uh, uh, cost per linear foot, if you will, because it has this extra enhancements of lighting and murals and, and vegetation and mid-block crossings. And the other two are slightly lesser. So we estimate at this point, at a planning level, it's about the full program for uh, the 11 alleys is around 1.5 million and change. Uh, we we recommended a, a phased implementation, if you will. I mean, all this is up for discussion and, and you know, uh, to, uh, based on what Antoinette has in her program. So we suggested, based on what we see for other projects, the first year, year and a half, from now till the end of 2025, we'll be uh, securing the funding, getting into some kind of uh, a more detailed engineering or design drawings, and, and more accurate cost estimates. And then uh, we recommend uh, actual construction in phase one, uh, which is the main alleys right next to Centennial Park and the, and, and, and the one behind it uh, in the first phase. So we, we've listed it at 26 to 28. Uh, again, we're not looking at you know, major uh, reconstruction, but just enhancements to the surface. Um, mid-block crossing, installation of murals, lighting, security cameras was another big one that was raised both by the department heads as well as um, the business owners. Um, so that's phase two. And then the last phase would be all the other corridors that we have in the plan, uh, which is uh, you know a lesser effort, but still it, it takes quite a bit of uh, uh, funding as well. So all in all, we think this can be delivered in six to seven years uh, based on how we see projects rolling in other places. And um, uh, again, these estimates are at this point in time, even DOT doesn't want to commit to uh, linear foot costs at this point because of inflation and how costs are raising every three months or so. But this is our best estimate at this point in time. And with that, I will take questions. Uh, lastly, I want to thank Antoinette and team for the support and the nudging and, and coordination and everything to make this project happen. We're thankful to be part of this uh, uh, wonderful project. Thank you. Actually, that's a good nudger. So. <laughs> Do we have any questions that you would like to ask, Mr. Wagner? So uh, a lot of the, I happen to manage the VFW. That's right where that alleyway is right there as well. Um, 
and that was that's if that was to turn into foot traffic only, uh, and we're doing a downtown event, that's really the only access that we have to get into that VFW parking for for veterans, not just public parking. It's for you know, more of the veterans to get in. So that hopefully we get something to consider and work on strategically gets a plan for them there. Um, my next question is if if on the surface if we're investing this kind of money on the surface side of it. Have we looked at on the ground? Because there's some really old sewers that are underneath them alleyways that are there right now right. that um, I've had issues with the VFW and they've had to jet the lines. And if they're painting murals on the ground and we've got to tear this up, there's a big expense to that again as well. So there's some more things to consider, I think, on the ground infrastructure that we, we should look at. Absolutely. And I think we, in our discussion with the department heads, that was, uh, that was mentioned. But that's not uh, an immediate uh, action right now. I think overall... Uh, there is a recognition that the, the the systems are aging, and and that that will be considered. Thank you. Yeah. Any other discussion? Well, thank you very much. Uh, do, do you have any experience as to whether or not this kind of improvement uh, to alleyways is something that uh, grant money is available? Uh, for these kind of projects? Yes, and we've listed in our report a, a number of grants that you could potentially apply, and okay. that depends on a lot of conditions. They look at the demographic and you know poverty and assessments and your winning chances. Right. So as much as grants are there, they're, they're competitive and, and tough to get, but it's not preventing us from applying. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you very much. We appreciate this report. Thank you, Thank sir. You. So I just wanted to make sure that as we, um, at the conclusion of this presentation, that the board it does in fact have an appetite for it because our next step would be now to proceed with the consultant in our phase two, as he mentioned, which is now um, trying to design prioritization and actual costs assessed with it. It'd have to come back before the board, of course, um, because now we need to establish a funding mechanism to go with it. So we did want to get kind of a um, consensus of the board's um, appetite for this project. I personally think it's a, it's a winner. Anything we can do to enhance all of our downtown is a winner to draw more traffic and investments uh, from people who want to start a business downtown, personally. Any other comments? We have an appetite for this. I think it's a great idea. I mean, it just, I think it's something that brings more foot traffic. Any more foot traffic to downtown is amazing. And, and I and I and I do think that, and um, Member Wagner already mentioned it. The, the infrastructure, you can tell it's starting to fail on the, mm -hmm. even the alley behind my building, and I know they've had to go back in there. So that that's just part of the. I mean, I I know the whole idea here is to make it look beautiful, but what's underground is it needs to be dug up. And while you're doing that, let's enhance it. So I'm, I'm all for it. I think it's a great idea. The alleyways are also. They're in their own phase of the downtown. Yes. So it's, it's all part of it as well. Right. Yeah, yes, okay. yes, so I thought. And, and I do know that Toho Water Authority did um, successfully um, receive some federal funds, thanks to Congressman Soto, um, to replace some of the aging infrastructure in the downtown. I don't know if any of these alleys are a part of it, but I know that they were intending to work with staff to prioritize um, so that we oh. could make sure that we were both working on the same street at the same time rather than one, one of us coming after um, and tearing up the work that the other had done. Well, that's good. Very good. I think you got thumbs up on that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next. So the next item Our is next item is our wayfinding signage, and I think you are still on board for that too. Yes, so um, last year, our, um, the staff via the consultant brought the wayfinding signage to the board um, to get commentary, and so we took those comments back. Uh, one of the requests was that we actually provided um, almost a life-size model of what the signage would look like based on the collection of the comments. So our consultant is here from GIA, Anna Kimmelton, and she also has the model for you all to see and hopefully get final approval.
not have you. Jokes clunky. Thank you, Internet. And thank you again for your time and for having me again today after our December meeting. My name is Anna Kimmelton. I'm with GI Consultant. Uh, last time we were here, we looked at some schematic designs based on uh, a questionnaire and some meetings with the directors. Uh, we discussed that people some li somewhat like the previous design. This is a second effort for this. Before the rebrand, we had one set of designs. And after the redesign, we got reached out uh, to create uh, a new design that aligned with a new city brand. Uh, so the, the overall consensus was to keep the designs historical and traditional, but consider that little contemporary edgy feel that the new brand has uh, for St. Cloud. We provided three different schematic design options. And after hearing the feedback, uh, we gathered that people or the board liked option B and C best. Uh, there was a definite like for the arch on the design because it reflected that historic and traditional look, the look that the downtown uh, St. Cloud has. So this is the refined option that came out of the feedback that we received in December. What you see in front of us is the uh, small vehicular sign. Uh, on the FDOT roads, the letters has to be six inches per their MUTCD. So this is the smaller one that would go in the interior side of the downtown area. These are all the vehicular signs on the screen, and this would be the pedestrian ones. We also went ahead and redesigned the directory map. Uh, and after this meeting, there's only two things that stood out. We have two different options for gateways. We have sort of a smaller one that it's a little more traditional and historic. And we have a second option. And the base of this, the first option there that you see, option one, could be also brick. That was one thing that we heard. So I left the two just to show that those two bases could be displayed uh, around the downtown. For example, the MAC can have a similar gateway sign, but have the limestone, because it looks more like that part of town. And we could do the brick on the downtown area. So we could, it, they're interchangeable. They will look like a family of signs, but they will give, it will give a unique accent to each one of the districts in the San Cloud uh, area. And then the second thing, we had conflicting comments on whether we use the St. Cloud logo throughout the system or not. So that's the second decision that we need to hear. Some people like having the logo there. There was an effort to create that logo, and we liked the logo at the top of the sign. But we also heard that once you're in St. Cloud, which is a fair comment, once you're in St. Cloud, you know you're here. Do we really need the logo everywhere? It's just, it's not a functional thing, it's just a matter of preference. So we would need to know your preference on that second decision. Uh, we also are providing some schematic sign locations. We create this signs by, or this location plans by overlapping maps. We had a previous uh, deliverable that was a research and analysis report where we have main corridors or main travel areas <clears throat> Uh, to go back a little bit, we, our scope of work is just the downtown. But in order for us to actually direct and route people to the downtown area, we need to have a larger study area. So we're going to place signs outside of our scope of work to lead people to the downtown and also list other destinations that are within the city. Because FDOT is going to look at those location plans and messages in order to approve and give you permits to do specially in Y92, uh, those signs. So we overlap all that information in order to see what the decision points are. Uh, in wayfinding, you don't have to oversign. You just have to have the key locations for those signage for them to be functional. So we have highlighted some gateway signs where those potential gateways could be. Again, this is schematic. We would then have to see who owns the property where those signs are going to be. They may be interchangeable or, or moved a little bit in order to be able to be implemented if it's a private property or we own a park and it can be one block this way or one block that way depending on uh, what's owned and what's not. But this is just on the border area. We place those signs. They're always going to be on the right of way. So if you're entering, you'll see it on the right. You'll have a directional sign telling you to turn left to downtown, but you'll see that gateway sign 
on the right away. Then we have vehicular signs. Again, finding those key intersections where we know people are gonna be looking for directions based on the, on the location plan and the destination. These would be parking signs and this one has to be reviewed. I know there's a couple of potential future garages so we'll revise this one. Again, this is a schematic level, but once you're in the downtown area, we need to provide people where to leave their vehicle to then come to this second layer, which is our pedestrian signs that would have information, directional information at the top for people that are just looking for their destination, their final destination. And at the bottom, there'll be a directory map. Uh, we usually just do a wayfinding map. We don't highlight private businesses on here. But downtown St. Cloud is a special place. And part of the beauty of the downtown is the private businesses. So in here, we have numbers at the top. And I can provide a, a better visual of what this map design would look like. Uh, there's a legend at the bottom that lists all the businesses within the downtown corridor. Uh, we, those would be modular. If anything changes within the business, we can change the bottom one of the directory and the map will remain the same. So that is all I have for today. Thank you for your time. And you all can see the, the sign, right? <laughs> make sure that if anything changes, we just have to change one blade, even though it looks like one blade, each individual piece is one. And then the back, the backer would be, this, is, this would all be an aluminum sign. This would be vinyl, retrospective vinyl for MUTCD. We have to have the, the light shine on them. And how they do, how we specify it is, the entire panel has that retrospective white, and then you have a vinyl overlay over it, so that the entire blade shines when, when it gets hit by the light. And then the backer would be a thicker aluminum piece to hold those plates. So again, we need to know what gateway sign we prefer to stick with on that preferred design panel, panel and whether we like or not like the same thought logo at the top. Comments or questions? We, I think, have several of those. Mr. Member Gilbert, please. Uh, speaking of logos, I, I think, I believe, and, and it's not just my decision, that, that's branding. And I think branding is important. So I agree. I, I, I just, um, I, I don't know why. I mean, there's an astronomical cost by branding or not. I, I don't know why. But I, I think the more repetitive they see, they see our logo, the more they'll come back. I agree. Yeah, I would certainly agree with that also. Mr. Loading, is that your light? Yes. That was my comment also. I, th I think being consistent throughout branding is very important. No, ma no matter where you're at, it, it just has to be reinforced, and it means repeat business. Um, can, can I comment on this sign? Go right here. <laughs> um, so on that sign there, so the way the construction that's going to be, the way that's going to be built, there's going to be a base, and then on each line item there, they're going to be interchangeable? Correct. Is that what you're saying? That's, Correct. That's going to be the design. Correct. So if something changes, you don't have to ease, change the whole blade. You just change that one portion that changes. Right, so you're going to slide that out. Correct. And slide something back Correct. in, however, however the construction is Correct. going to be. And that's looking at being like a composite or, or metal, or that's not you, that's Aluminum. somebody else. What's that? Aluminum. They're both aluminum. So you, typically what, we're, what we are specifying is the backer is a quarter inch aluminum painted, the back's painted, and then the front, it's an eighth of an inch aluminum painted and then has the vinyl overlay over that. Okay. Yeah, that'll last. They last a lot longer. We specify uh, automotive gray paint on them. So those has, a, you will get a one year warranty, but those, those facilities have testing places in Arizona where they put them and they weather the pain and they can last 10 to 15 years. Okay. So go back to the back panel again. What it, what it, it's aluminum but it's how thick? It's it's a quarter inch alu uh, aluminum. It, the backer. It, it's ACM or it's just straight aluminum. Do you? Oh, okay. But how it's quarter inch? 
Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. And the other one is how thick? An eighth of an inch. Eight. Okay. So if you've ever been to downtown Orlando and seen those signs, that's about the same construction details that this would have. It, it has a, a custom bracket at the top, uh, both a backer to attach to, this would be attached to an, a black aluminum post okay. to match the lighting. That's part of your brand, that's part of the look of downtown, so we wanna extend that to the wayfinding as well. So they would be mounted on an aluminum post uh, to match that light post in the downtown area, and then each blade would be attached to the backer by another Custom, custom bracket piece. Um, well, just a comment on the, the brick or the stone. I don't know what anybody else's thoughts are, but as you're looking at the screen and at this paper I have printed out and everything, the stone looks so much cleaner to me. It, and it's clean. It's about the gateway. Yeah, and the, and the uh, footprint is smaller on it. I think it's more... Um, it, it, it has more, um, you know, it's got a better look to it. It shows out better than this other sign. It's just my opinion. But, um, and I had one other, uh, let me see if I put anything else. Uh, oh, and as far as the directional signs, you say downtown, the, the way that's going to be built, so businesses downtown will be listed on there. But it's going to be an easy, interchangeable... Correct. And that's on the pedestrian level. So businesses would not be listed on FDOT roads. They, FDOT Correct. has a Correct. very specific hierarchy and requirements for destinations. But on pedestrian signs, it would. Correct. On and the that, map. And that it would be an easy change... Correct. ...for Correct. the city going forward. Because, because it's going to be only... Excellent. Correct. The size is going to be small enough that... And we also discuss, and we will have that, that MAP would have a QR code that will link to a website. So if instead of having the names of the businesses on the actual MAP, we want to link direct people to the Chamber of Commerce website uh, or the downtown... But it'll still say Chamber of Commerce, right? And, the, and then a Q Correct. QR code. Correct. And what we recommend, we will provide uh, the artwork for the map. And what we would recommend is that any time that you're using a map, you use the same map to keep it consistent and create that branding and that sense of acknowledgement in place that wayfinding needs in order to be efficient. Okay. So on that, so you're going to create, the, the, your company or whoever is going to create that map. Correct. It's the, done. And then you will share that with... Mm -hmm our economic development Correct. or the city, so Correct. they have that same map. Because I, 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 that's Correct. the thing that does irritate me is when you have all these different types of maps Correct. out there, and every one of them looks different. Mm -hmm. So then if they wanted to be printed or put on, a, put on something like um, advertising for an event, they can draw that map and use that and, and maybe put the parade route on or whatever. So everyone's on the same. Correct. Okay. You would have the native file, which is this was done in Illustrator. is a vector. So it, you can enlarge it and shrink it however you want to. And there will be an editable PDF as well. So you, you would own those. Illustrator the artwork is, is yours. perfect. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Member Urban. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I would agree with everyone. I like having the logo on every sign for branding. Um, I, I liked for our historic district, at least, I, I like the brick, but I, I do agree that the, the other one does look very nice and clean. I just, I feel like there's more of a historic feel with, with the brick, but uh, that was my only comment. The, the signs look, look great. Are you saying on the gateway you would prefer type A? Is that what you're saying? Uh, it, they both say type A, so I'm not, I would prefer option well, the two. Well, I meant the first option there. Yeah, option one and option two. Yeah, I, I like option two for the downtown just because it's a, because it's a historic feel, but um, that, that's just me. You done? I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Member Wagner. Thank you. <clears throat> Our, so these gateways, these are looking to be placed like at Massachusetts, New York, Pennsylvania, Florida. Are there any, are they going to be illuminated at all? Can we have that yeah. option? Correct. So in the case you see here, the actual letters on on option one, the letters would be halo lit, okay. uh, the St. Cloud letters, and we could have some sort of treatment illuminating the downtown depending on where they're placed because they're floating. 
We don't want them to be backlit and then be a nuance for the neighbors or it just depends on where they are. We can talk about how to illuminate the downtown since this is just schematic at the moment. Uh, and then on option two, we could have the top where it says welcome to the historic downtown or welcome to downtown illuminated as well. So it could be the whole panel like a light box illuminated or we can have those be also pin letters or a halo lid, which usually looks a little bit better. Thank you. I, uh, Member Gilbert, your light is on. Yeah. Uh, in the past, it's it's my um, uh, uh, experience that there's a lot of areas for signs here. If we can double side some of these signs, because we have to, we'll be paying for the base and we'll be paying for the structure anyway. If we can double side some of these signs, it seems to be a, a less of an expense because you're already building the base and things like that. Has that become something you thought about? Yes. So we are double, I don't know if you can see in the location plans, but those would be single sided. We don't recommend double siding any. Uh, directional information because again we're trained to look to the right for directional information and even if you think of travel lanes if it's on the other side and I'm looking it can be confusing mm -hmm. so we don't recommend vehicular signs but when we see parking is a little different because you're going a lot slower uh, so we could look <clears throat> at locations where we have double-sided parking signs and then if you see the icon uh, the, the rectangular piece would be the sign and there's two sides to it uh, we also discuss having on one side having some sort of screen. It could be a touch screen or some sort of screen. And then on the other side of that pedestrian sign, a static map. In case there's downtime, there's always information on the sign. So that those discussions have happened. I believe we had them here in December. Uh, but yes, the pedestrians are for sure double-sided. So you don't have to have them on two sides or... Thank you. Correct. Our city manager. Yes, I had a question. Thank you, Mayor. Um, at the most recent city council workshop, staff, I think it was at the workshop, it may have been at a council meeting, staff was given direction to look at putting an arch at New York and 192. Um, again, something that the CRA had talked about years ago. And I'm just not, I was just trying to understand how that would work if we put, put the arch, because um, it looked, the map you were just on had several map had several um, icons right at New York and 192. So I was trying to picture what would be there with these signs. So we would look at those plans and everything. So again, this is schematic. Once there is, this is the, sort of the next phase, but we would go to a design intent document, which is your bid package. Once an, a fabricator is awarded, you would do walkthroughs to make sure that the sign placement is correct, that there's no obstructions, there's no trees. We also have to consider, again, FDOT requirements of placement. So to make sure that the signs are visible, those detailed locations where the fabricator would put a stake on the ground and give you the locate to see that there's no utilities conflicting around the signs when they dig and you don't have a massive outage and something because they they broke something on the sign. So that, that would be a next phase. These are just recommended locations based on that overlap of information and data that we collected on the first stage of the project. So yes, we would look at what's there. If there is a plan like to create a gateway on certain, on a certain locations, we would need the location of that to avoid having something that would intrude or be blocked by the gateway. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lodi? Oh, am I on? I think that, yeah. I'm off. You're off now. Yeah, sorry. Um, are we needing to make a decision from this group as regarding the uh, gateway sign? I think we, you have a consensus on the logo. Correct. Let me go back to that one. Yes. Do we have any additional, Mr. Wagner? If we if if we're talking about doing an arch in downtown. I, I think I would go with option two to make it more similar to that in, in other areas. If there's something we could get, maybe some drawings on what the arch could look like to match this or the other one, either one, so we could can, we can make a decision based on that. I mean, that's my opinion. Yeah, I, 
I would, I would agree with you. I, I like that. The first one, it kind of pops, but I don't think it would go with uh, the rest of the decor. It could. What do you think? <laughs> well, because uh, if you used your post as like an um, option, one, mm. one, yeah. And then put your arch going, drawing from that going up and over. Like make the downtown round over the, the St. Cloud? Yeah. I like that. So we were, we were just discussing that you do have the option of splitting the baby. You can have the um, option two for the historic area and then use the stone for the remainder, like along 192. That is an option as well. So you don't necessarily have to choose one or the other. There could be a, a compromise. Okay. Well, Member Matheny is here, and I'm sure she has something to say. <laughs> <laughs> you guys possibly covered this, but when I looked at the um, attachment, is that like see-through mesh metal on option two? Correct. What, okay. Yeah. I... I I mean, personally, I think type A is much easier to read. Um, I like to maybe do a hybrid like was suggested, um, but. You mean option one? Oh, option sorry. Option one, yeah, I'd option say one. Sign type A, yeah, option one. I think option one is easier to read um, yeah. than option two. I mean, I don't know if maybe, you know, that's a pedestrian level sign, option two, and then option one is more for vehicular traffic because it's just. Much easier, you know. If you're driving, you're not reading option two. Yeah, option one's a a gateway sign. It, well, they it, both are. It lot. Well, I mean, but it just really pops for me. Yeah, yeah. Did you say during your presentation that we could do option one, but change the stone to Correct. the brick downtown? Correct. Correct. So if if everybody, it sounds like everyone likes option one. We could just change the base to be brick downtown and use the. I don't know what other type of rock that is, slate, I'll call it, everywhere else. We or could take up some of those paper bricks that aren't working out on the <laughs> <laughs> streets here. Too soon. Too soon. Um, Mr. Lodi. Am I on again? Um, I'll make a comment. Um, yeah, I, you know, you could put brick around there. I'd, I'd want to see a mock-up of it. But because uh, I still think that rock is clean, yeah. and I'd still run oh, the post up that option one and put the arch, over, arch on it and come back down with another Saint Cloud on the other right. side. I I think, that's yeah. I think the hybrid is. Oh, uh, I think so too. I, th I think it'll. I think it would look great. And then downtown, you know, welcome to downtown. Yeah. Welcome, you know. Can we get some drawings on that by by chance? That'd be yeah, awesome. absolutely. I think that I, th I think we're all agree with the same. Option, incorporate option one. I'm just going to rephrase it to see if I understand it you want the arch portion of option two on option one correct okay and then we want to see two versions one with the stone and one, and one with, with the with brick it. you got it because I'm, I'm I got my check right <laughs> and those those stones uh when we go into implementation we ask the fabricator to provide samples before they even start doing anything so you would get the samples to see what that would actually look like because on screen everything looks very different yeah, that's for sure and, and i do you know and i my last comment is i i do believe the brick kind of ties into our downtown but just what i like so what else do you need from us you have some direction now? I got it. I think All I right. got everything I needed. Thank you again for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Moving on to our CRA extension financial plan. So as you know, the CRA is set to sunset December of 2031. We are working with the county in order to um, request an extension for an additional 10 years as allowed by Florida statute. And so part of that request with the county is they have asked us to provide them a project list. And so we want to not just provide that project list, but also our timeline of use of funds for that financing plan, which includes a bonding capacity. We want to bring that before you first, before we provide it to the county to make sure that the board was in agreement um, so that as we move forward and hopefully get the county's um, authorization, that this is how we intend to expend funds and on specific projects moving forward. So with that, I have Adrian Esteban with Redevelopment Management Associates to go over the plan.
Good evening, CRA board and city staff. I'm Adrienne Esteban. I'm a senior project manager with RMA. As Antoinette said, this is a, a document that's requested by the county, but it's also a phase two of what we talked about in December, which we're identifying those um, projects, I'm gonna go to that page first, um, that could occur in an extension period, as well as um, projects that could really pretty much only occur if you had financing available. So what we did is we looked long term at the financing that would be needed um, and we do that by looking at your sources which are typically your tax increment revenue, um, you do have some investment earnings and then um, what we do is we compare those to the uses that are needed. So you have your operational expenses because we are um, talking about financing, we also included debt service. And because it's over the longer term of an extension period, you have obviously longer time to pay it and not as much every year that goes towards that. Your finance department will review everything and will be the ones to make the final decisions about anything, but this just gives a good guide of where we think you'll be spending your money. Um, and then the last portion of the uses is your redevelopment area investments. Those are your projects that you're doing, which is the bulk of the funding. And then for most of the years, you'll see there's a pretty healthy contingency um, in most years, and that gives you some flexibility. It can move from one year to the other um, based upon um, you know, how much funding you have left over. Um, we also look at the extension period, um, which is for the next 10 years, ending in 2041. So similar, uh, looked at the uses, looked at the expenses, and then you have your reserve in there. So the first projects that we talked about are having to deal with land acquisition. And we do think you should have um, a portion in there every year, just in case you see properties that could become available. Some of this might be aggregated in real life, but on paper, we just wanted to make sure every year you had uh, funding available. The other big project here is the um, downtown P3 uh, mixed use with public parking. We do think you will need financing for that because you're going to need a bulk of um, funding available for um, that type of project. And then in the extension period, again, just looking to make sure that you have um, funding available for property acquisition if needed. The second phase, I'm gonna go over this one pretty quick because these, this is really from the strategic five-year um, action plan that we created for you all. Just um, having some funding in there for your current uh, paint plant pay program, which seems to be going pretty well, and having uh, homeowners participate, which is a great thing, and then an infill project as well. Not too much in the extension period for that particular project. Now this um, section of connectivity and public spaces is where most of the financing we're suggesting to go, and that's really to do with Centennial Park. We think that that could become a real community asset and a civic space for all of your residents and the main focal point of the downtown. So we do think it's um, strategic to put some you know, real funding there to improve that space. Um, as well, um, we included projects that you, you even just spoke about earlier, the alleyway improvements, making sure you have enough funding. I did put a little bit more than they suggested in there um, based upon projects that we've seen, um, as well as including um, the medical arts um, district uh, infrastructure, excuse me, infrastructure improvements that might be needed, funding towards that. And really, you'll need the extension period to be able to do the alleyway improvements because as we're suggesting here, those, would, uh, those activities would occur mostly in the extension period. Um, the next section deals with um, uh, development uh, downtown. That would be um, trying to entice a hotel uh, to the area, area, excuse me, as well as downtown parking improvements. Um, that funding would be going towards either a garage type of structure. In the interim, it could also go to surface parking um, as you're building your capacity um, in the downtown, um, as well as historic preservation um, initiatives that would occur um, in the later years as well as in the extension period. And then we do think it, in the extension period, you're probably gonna continue to see uses for um, parking improvements, either purchasing properties and improving them for um, parking uses. Um, this last, last section, excuse me, deals with your um, 
branding and marketing um, initiatives. The big one here is the one you just talked about, wayfinding. So we do think you're gonna need your financing in order to fund that. Um, we have seen some of the bigger gateway signs that I think you all are talking about. Those are typically somewhere between like 300 to 400, even we've seen 400,000 little client of ours just installed one. Um, more in a beach area, so I think probably um, different kind of materials, higher because uh, of salt water. But um, they can get quite expensive, so we want to make sure you have a healthy amount there. Um, but then also continuing your great um, programs that you have, like your art in public places and your marketing collateral and communications. Oh, sorry, I thought that was the last one. That was, and this is just continuing of your uh, current programs that you have, including your uh, building and site improvement grant program, your business tax receipt program. You do have some additional funding in here for land and equipment, machinery, and buildings as well, which again, land should probably, and land and the grant should continue in any extension period as well. These are just a breakdown of your operating expenditures for every year, including in the extension period. And then this sheet here um, helped us to figure out what we think your anticipated revenues would be, mostly from, like I said, the TIF before. So we have estimated a pretty conservative um, 3 to 4% growth. We know some years we've seen 10. During the recession, unfortunately, we, you know, we've seen even negative 10. Um, so we just wanted to be conservative here. And with that, I will end my presentation. Um, the other only thing I wanted to say is it, you guys are doing great things hearing the items that you had today, tonight. It was so exciting. So it's great to see you're on the upswing and you know doing lots of very exciting things here. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone like to have any questions? <coughs> if not, thank you very much. That uh, is gonna be a very important report there. Are we done so with I, ju I just want to make sure that um, the board understands the next step. Our next step will be the transmittal of this um, financing plan to the county um, as part of the process to request the extension for our CRA. City Manager. Antoinette, um, the previous agreement that we had with the county instead of following um, the property value increase for the TIF, it had specific amounts allocated. I was a little concerned looking at this that, that they may see the conservative allocation and determine that that's all that um, they need to, that they should give us. Um, I, I, I just wanted to, to, to say that to the council so that we can keep that in mind and, and push to use the TIF. Okay. <laughs> Standard. Allocation. Okay. Is this something here we need to vote on? Okay. Can we just get consensus uh, that so that we can forward it to the to the county? Do we have any objections to forwarding moving forward with the county? You have a unanimous consensus. And are we moving on to the next item? Funding allocation. So resolution number 2024-00CR is our funding allocation balance at the end of the year. Any of the funding that's left over must, by Florida statute, be assigned to a project. That project um, has three years in order for implementation. And so um, this year, at the end of 2030-2033, we have $756,397. As you see, we have broken it down by the alleyway improvements for $500,000, the downtown parking for one, 156397 and then $100,000 towards the Centennial Park with the first phase being the re public restrooms. This does require um, CRE board approval. Do we have any discussion? I got a question about the uh, downtown parking. Go right ahead. Anything behind the hotel? Is there any way we can get them to move some of that product that's there closer to the alleyway to the hotel and we put some crushed asphalt there to create more parking? Is that possible? While we're doing other projects throughout the... So, um, I, there... That's there just was, temporary. There was some type of agreement that was signed with the previous city manager, Sturgeon. I'd, I'd have to look at um, what it was that we had that authorized them to use that area. But I will say for additional parking, um, the city, not the CRA, um, as part of our budget 
review process is we're, we're hoping to, um, if, if we can handle it, pave the grass lot across from the fire station um, where we've moved city vehicles um, currently and so we could continue to have city vehicles parking over there and maybe also some additional employees. I also reached out to Mr. Vickers and asked him to start having his employees park at the um, church parking lot. I also uh, recently had a conversation again with um, Toho Water and also express that. They want to talk to me about that one a little bit more. I think everybody's a little concerned about in the rain making their employees over the summer um, walk a couple blocks, but um, we'll get through that. But we, So we are looking to spend the money on paving the other lot. Um, if the CRA wanted to put money for an additional um, parking lot behind the hotel, we've looked at that before, but the CRA declined it due to the expense. All right. Member Matheny? Thanks. I, I, it's maybe not the right place to ask it, but you brought it up, so I wanted to ask. Um, are we making any progress with the agreement with the church for a parking garage? I would need um, City Attorney Manzaris to give an update on that. Okay. Member Gilbert. Yeah, uh, you talked about restrooms in Centennial Park, right? Yes. Okay. Is there any, is, we just, it's, is it just talk now or have we making any moves toward, towards it? So this would be the first okay. move towards it is okay. um, establishing some funding and then we would, we've already created a project number um, in our finance department for it. Um, I know the uh, city architect has already come up with a preliminary design of what it would look like. Um, but of course we need to make sure that we have funding before we even get started. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comment? I, yeah. I would just like to add that the restrooms are, are actually would be right next to Centennial Park is, is the area that we've been talking about as staff. Um, stopping at where the substation is on 10th Street and extending to the, there's a building that's owned by someone else. I'm not, I'm not sure what that it Bob, is. Bob's building? Bob's building, yes. Um, extending that whole way. So um, it, it, it it, we've had the architect do a preliminary, so next we would start working on costs to see how likely that would be. But we, we would be excited because porta potties downtown during events that stay are, are not the aesthetic, I think, and the environment that we're aiming for. Right. Any other discussion? Do I have a motion for the adoption of resolution number 2024-001-CR? So on, moved. Chief. We have a motion from Member Matheny. Do I have a second? Second. And a second from Member Gilbert. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And there are none. We are rocking and rolling. And I believe you have one more item. We do. So the CRA purchased property located at 900 Ohio Ave with the intention of um, future parking space. Um, at that point, it already had current tenants. The tenants are still there. However, we assumed the lease. And so that lease expired uh, January 31st of this year. Um, due to timing, there not being a CRA board meeting up until now. Um, the city manager as the executive director of the CRA executed the lease for one year um, for, uh, to last until February 1st of 2025. We are requesting a ratification of that item. Make sure there's nothing else. A ratification of that item um, for that lease. Member Bethany. What's the rent? 1500 a month. That's pretty cheap. <laughs> So under the CRA, um, so the statutes speak that we can um, not only execute a lease, but it's part of the affordable housing that uh, once we purchase the property, we have somewhat displaced. Um, we purchased the property for a future project, and so we can do a affordable housing project of which this would qualify for that we're offering them submarket rates. You done? 
It's, it's already approved. I mean, yes. there's nothing we can do about it. it yes, you can. It, it was they, they they were told that it had to be ratified by the board to be final. So yes, you can. And the 1500 a month, I think, was a continuation of the rent that they had been paying under the previous landlord. So um, I, 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 as far as I understand it, yes, you can um, require that change. I mean, I would like to know what the market rate is of a lease. I mean, I know 1500 is very low. Um, right now so I would I would only state that um, one of the CRA goals does speak to about affordable housing of which the CRA has not had an affordable housing project yet at least to my knowledge um, of which this would qualify for so what what do you mean so what, to me. so what I mean by that is part of our annual report, which we have to submit every year, we also have to submit what are we doing as far as the assistance of affordable housing for low-income persons. Um, every year we have to report that the CRA currently is not doing any projects. Okay. So this simply would be eligible as part. Eligible for that. Correct. All right. Uh, Mr. Wagner. So is the current tenant in there qualify for um Low income mm -hmm. housing? Yeah. Yes. They, so if they do qualify for it, then I, I think we just stay where it's at. It's already been approved. Right. And, That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. If they qualify. Puts a feather in our cap. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Are we need ratification of this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Could I have a motion that uh, we approve this lease effective for another year at the current rate we had just been stated? Do I have a motion? I make a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a second for Mr. Wagner. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And it carries. Well, you guys are slow in these motions. And seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I try to give someone else a chance because I'll do it right away, you know. <laughs> well, Matheny's here, so we can move along. I okay? know. <laughs> so our annual report, as I mentioned, each year we have to submit an annual report now. We, are, we only have to talk about, you know, expenditures and revenues and such, but we try to go the next step and talk about what are the projects and programs that we're doing. So the annual report, which is in your packet, just gives a um, summary of what we've done this year. We've been a little bit busy. So under projects, um, the CRA was a contributor to the Pennsylvania Avenue Streetscape project. We also purchased the 900, 900 Ohio app, which was part of our land acquisition project, which was part of the parking, future parking. Uh, we also um, contract with some consultants. As you saw, we had a room full for our wayfinding uh, signage, also with the alleyway improvements. We continued our grants program. So we had our plant paint pave program. We had our business tax receipt program. We had our uh, business site improvement program as well. Uh, we also won an award with the FRA, uh, which was a state award for the Ola St. Cloud event, which was our first FRA award, which was really exciting. And then also the last page of the report, which I thought was pertinent, really just gives a culmination of all the work the CRA has done to date from 2005. So I thought it was important to note that to date we've done over 52 commercial facade improvement grants, totaling $759,154 um, that we awarded, uh, 10 tax receipt grants. We also at that time did three residential um, facade grants as well. Um, and that the taxable value um, has increased over $89 million since we have started. So we have been busy. Congratulations to you all for your hard work. Uh, so just wanted to give you a synopsis of what our annual report was. And then if you don't mind, if there, unless there's any questions, I have another thing I wanted to add. Well, I just want to say thank you for all your hard work. You do an excellent job, you and your staff, and uh, keep up the, the good work. Thank you. We've got a second on that. <laughs> <laughs> So speaking of staff, we have a new staff person, Raquel Ladero. She comes from Operation Hope. If you're unfamiliar, Operation Hope provides um, financial and technical assistance to both homeowners, mostly first-time homeowners, as well as business assistance of how to start a business. Um, she also has CDBG experience, particularly at re in relation to compliance, which is always important. And we are welcome. Um, so happy to have her here. She is in week two. So, welcome. Great to have you here. Welcome. 
And then lastly, just wanted to give you an update on the St. Cloud Hotel. So at the last time we met, which was in December of last year, uh, staff had brought you the agreement that we had uh, uh, negotiated um, an agreement with the building owner, if you recall, he was here. Uh, at the time, the agreement, the um, frontal part of the agreement was signed and executed. However, since that time, we provided him the agreement in its entirety because it was missing um, several pages, the pages that related to like the mortgage, the security um, agreement portion of it, um, which to date has been unsigned. Um, it's important to note that because now we're at the point that even the um, milestones, the dates that were specified in the agreement have also passed. So it's important for you all to know where we are um, as far as the progression of that agreement. I think it's also important to note that um, the board did allocate 300,000 um, in its, um, I think two years ago, as, far to, as part of its um, fund balance allocation. And so per statute, you have three years on an assigned project um, to, out, to expend those funds. Otherwise, we have to really allocate it to another project. So just wanted to give the board an update of where we were as far as the project and the agreement that was approved. Member Gilbert. I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, city manager. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to add, um, Ms. Forbes was explaining to me earlier that once that original three year period has completed, we cannot reallocate money from the CRA to the hotel for another three years. So I, I felt like that was an important detail to let you know. Right. Correct. It cannot be allocated to the exact same project. You have to wait at least another three years out to do it again. Okay. Any other discussion, questions? 300,000 could put asphalt behind that hotel. <laughs> 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 All right. Are you ready for the any other financials? Our bi-monthly financials. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Jeff Cooper, Finance Director. Uh, I want to introduce, while we're on introductions, uh, my new deputy, which most of you I don't think have met. This is uh, Mark Camula II, uh, our new Deputy Finance Director, been with us for about six months. Uh, good man, certified public accountant. And he's got to go pick up a child, so you can go. All right. <laughs> Good to have you here. Welcome to the staff. Welcome. And I have copies of the audit for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So this is our bi-monthly uh, financial statement update. Um, for revenues, as you can see, we've uh, actually collected uh, more revenue than we originally budgeted for. Uh, the Osceola County payment, as the city manager alluded to, is a set payment, so it has nothing to do with valuations or anything. It's previous agreement from 2005. So. I can already tell you for next year, you're getting one, one million three hundred seven thousand and change. Um, so the reason that's different this year is because that one point one 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 million is actually what we received the previous year, and since my predecessor left me in the middle of last year's budget, that didn't get changed. So that's my oversight, but that was to our benefit. Uh, operating interest, um, obviously interest rates have increased, so um, we, uh, we always estimate our operating um, interest on the conservative side intentionally, so uh, you'll make um, some additional interest. That's only six months worth, so. And the rents, as you can see, that's your $1,500 a month from 900 Ohio Avenue. And the interfund transfer is actually the general fund's contribution to the CRA. Um, and actually, that was computed originally lower than it should have been. So you're going to generate another 300, approximately 300,000 in revenue there as well. Uh, for expenditures, um, 
total expended year to date, you spent 577,000 of the 1.6 uh, million in total budget. And uh, again, I think it was mentioned the hotel um, is $300,000 of that is unspent. The agreement with the police department for the three CRA officers, uh, that's billed on a quarterly basis and there's only one quarter recorded so far. So there's another 200 plus thousand that's unspent there. Um, but on average in the four years that I've been here, um, approximately 600,000 is has been left over at the end of each year that we've assigned to various projects. So um, if you had the question of can the CRA afford like the proposed debt payment that they mentioned, my answer would be yes, assuming that the CRA is extended, of course, because um, at present we only have seven years left of the current um, CRA agreement. Um, that's all I have. Any uh, questions, comments, concerns? Do we have any questions? Seeing none. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you for your report. Would any of our members have any items or updates that you would like to bring to our attention? I do not see any. Do we have any public that would like to make a public comment? I don't see any. For your information, our next CR meeting will be Thursday, June the 6th, 2024, here in Council Chambers. With that, we will be adjourned.